Been a while since I last put on my research glasses and explored the monster as thoroughly as I can. Well, here I am, ready to dive deep into creature lore again, but you have not made my job easy. The Fresno Nightcrawler won the latest poll, and while information was not that hard to come by, I already dread the part where I'll have to make a realistic version. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though and take our time with the analysis of this unique Thing. I think the best way to introduce this critter is by watching the first sighting, which was actually recorded on tape. How convenient. Yes, those pants you saw oddly slide across the lawn was the crawler, a featureless, two-legged, presumably white thing. The quality is quite something, as is usually the case with cryptids. It is so bad that I've seen some articles claim it was from the 90s, but that is incorrect, as we have a precise date. November 5th. 2007, the first monster to be dissected that was conceived this century. Now, the bad quality has an explanation, sort of. Van Jose, whose last name is a mystery to this day, was allegedly awoken at the middle of the night by a dog barking. Since his family was a victim of bicycle theft not long ago, they had two surveillance cameras installed looking at their yard. He sat in front of his monitor and looked at what could be the cause of the mild commotion outside. That is when he saw the leggings gracefully glide over the lawn. He immediately woke up his brother, but by that time the pale pantaloons were gone. Still, he had evidence. Unfortunately, only one of the cameras recorded the incident, and it just so happened to be the one with the worst quality. How inconvenient. But that's not all. The whole system was set up so that if somebody wound the tape, everything that was on it would get overwritten on a playback. How unlucky. Jose was unable to figure out a way to copy the tape either, or take it out of the machine I guess, so there was only one more chance to watch the footage. But you saw the video with your own two eyes, so he must have had a solution. Kind of. He woke up the rest of the family and whipped out a handheld camera to record the recording. Hence the crisp quality of the only footage we have. Ignore the noises, it's just my inner skeptic having an aneurysm. The late night watch party had quite the effect on the family. Jose's brother went out searching for footprints and he allegedly found some small depressions, but we have to take his word for that one as there is no evidence or second witness to those. The cameraman himself was so frightened he was afraid to leave the house for two weeks. However, he did contact Univision, a local network, to share his story. One of the reporters there called a... Well, I was going to say expert, but let's say someone who is extremely enthusiastic about believing in cryptids, regardless of circumstance. How interesting that they chose this one particular person. The man's name is Victor Camacho. He is regarded as a, and I quote, paranormal researcher. He is also the radio host of Los Desvelados, which is a podcast about, you guessed it, the paranormal. He was among the first people to see the video outside the family and, unsurprisingly, he was amazed by the shuffling trousers. He concluded that the thing was either an alien or an elf. Yes, he is that kind of person. Could be extraterrestrial, could be elves. I don't know. Victor wanted to talk with Jose in person, and after the man got over his fear of bounding breaches, they managed to organize a meeting. Jose was very timid and nervous. He did not want to show his face at the time. An understandable request, but knowing what I know of this incident, I cannot help but question if he was unsure if people are gonna buy his tale and didn't want any negative publicity if they didn't. But I digress, there's still quite a bit of the story left. So what allegedly happened at that night, the little recounting I've gone over, comes directly from Victor. He shared everything he knew during a MUFON talk. MUFON stands for Mutual UFO Network and is a non-profit, dare I say, pseudo-scientific organization of volunteers. They investigate and report on everything extraterrestrial with no hint of skepticism. Luckily, here I am full of the stuff. Either way, there is a short video about part of his presentation, which I'll link in the description if you'd want to give it a watch yourself. 
It's quite informative, not just about the whole ordeal, but about the people who investigated it all. Well, this guy was really a scare. This is roughly where this particular tale of the Nightcrawler ends. The original footage was never recovered, Jose never revealed more, and unfortunately, it seems he has passed away since. He did meet again with Victor, and he was confident enough to show his face on camera too, but this was a year after he managed to fool the UFO enthusiast hook, line and sinker. Why do I say this? Why am I so confident that this is all a hoax? Well, there are a plethora of reasons, so let's begin with taking one more thorough look at the video. The galloping jeans don't quite manage to move in a way consistent with their orientation. They seem to be sliding slightly to the left, compared to where they are facing, and do not move in the direction they logically should. Additionally, the steps are a bit weird and not exactly matching the speed at which the object is moved. Oh wow, that's all, the average alien moves a little silly, but a joke of a point. Thank you for your valuable input, dear Strowman, but that's not it. Not even concerning this incident, let alone the others. This section, the one that is played to death on every video or article desperately clawing to unearth a shred of credibility for the monster, was not the only one recorded by Jose. In fact, we have no idea how many failed attempts there were, but there was one other the man was confident enough sharing. This is that one. He looked to the monitor and he said those things. Just watch. What is the laser? Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let's see. Right here is walking. They come. Okay, this is the front yard of this house. This is small palm. Over here is the street, and here is a fence. So he just wake up because the door, the, the dogs uh, were barking pretty bad, and he starts seeing this creature over here. You can see how he just stopped, maybe because he heard the dogs or something, and then start walking again. You see the movement of this uh, being is kind of natural. Is kind of natural. <laughs> you serious? Not exactly convincing, is it? It's just something sliding here and there. There are times when it's even dangling from its suspension cord. I have no idea why Jose immortalized this attempt, but it makes everything quite obvious. This is a piece of fabric puppeteered across the screen in an attempt to appear living. Now, Victor did apparently try to replicate the footage to see if it could have been faked. Let's all disregard the gaping hole in his methodology, whereby he believed and publicized everything first, then decided to do some experimenting. I was unable to unearth any details of this study within giant quotation marks. As far as I know, nothing was published, there might not even be written or recorded evidence of it all. The only things approaching the same postal code as proof are two quotes from an article. Apparently, Victor determined that nothing could compare to the original footage. Interesting. He also said that, for me, the video is real. Jose didn't make it. Neither did his brother. That's quite specific wording there, pal. For you, it is real. Also, that leaves a few billion people on the planet who could have done it, and I'm not even sure about excluding those two. Oh well, if only there were other people who tested it. And what do you know? There are. Now, there is a pathetic joke of a show called Fact or Faked Paranormal Files. It's an empty void of legitimacy where science and credibility go to die. It's shocking, but they were also unable to reproduce the video and deemed it unexplainable. Luckily for us, others have also tried. Take a look at this beauty. It was made by Power Breakdown, whose video on the topic will be linked under this one. It is indeed some wire-based puppeteering, with the abysmal quality doing the heavy lifting in obscuring the cords. Go watch his coverage if you are interested in how exactly he did it. 
So it is quite clear already that there were no knickers from outer space raiding Jose's front yard. Just look at the fence it would have had to slide through to even attempt the stunt. However, no cryptid story is complete with at least a few follow-up hoaxes and or genuine misidentifications. The nightcrawlers have them both in ample supply. Just a few years after someone dragged a puppet across a Fresno lawn, this footage saw the light of day in 2011. This seems to be of a somewhat higher quality and the creatures are a lot more visible. Unsurprisingly, their movement seems very puppety. Apparently, a couple living in the Yosemite National Park had trouble with vandals damaging and stealing property. I guess thieves are precursors to nightcrawler sightings. Local officials installed a security camera looking at the driveway to record the malcontents with questionable placement to say the least. It's not pointing at the property, it's not looking at an angle from which their faces could have been reliably recorded, it even has a few trees in the way. I'm not a security expert, but this would not be my choice for strategic placement. Either way, not much else is known about this video. It proves very little beyond the fact that puppets can be made to look like striding bloomers. Why are there so many words for pants? And the little buzz around it altogether signals to me that its sole purpose was to capitalize on and bolster the urban legend. However, it made the crucial mistake of making the things somewhat identifiable. If these are indeed creatures, they have some interesting choice of clothing, as whatever is covering them is clearly not their skin. For the sake of thoroughness, I'll also show you this very convincing piece of evidence from Poland. It was released in 2017 and seems so fake that even the believers dismiss it. The continental jump alone would have made it a tough pill to swallow, but the unbending legs just put the cherry on top of this urinal cake. Aside from that, there is a third video of significance which sheds some light on the potential experience of people claiming to have seen the monster. As part of another highly credible show titled The Truth Is Out There, we hear Sean Ragan recount his story. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to hear the full thing, but to keep it short, he found a dead deer near his family's property one morning. It was likely killed by something, but it was not eaten for some reason. His curiosity peaked, Sean decided to see if their security camera recorded anything. Yep, it's another one, but this one is unwatered and genuine. Let's watch it together. Incredible, right? No way that that's a puppet. Well, it isn't. It's also not one thing, but two. One of them is presumably the dead deer he found. Yes, that's two of the animals having a fight. The video is high quality enough to make out the shape of the two deer and even see the light reflected in their eyes in some frames. Deer standing upright can look rather odd at night from a distance, and they are known to do it on their own too. Additionally, there are quite a few wading birds that might have confused a person or two, like a great or snowy egret, perhaps a wood stork. They are known to retract their long necks, and in the dark it's easy to miss the bills too. There are numerous animals that can be reliably mistaken for the prancing denims, so it is no surprise that there are people who claim to have seen them. The Fresno Nightcrawler is obviously not an actual animal, even if we ignore the nature of the videos. It has no facial features, often not even eyes. It has a single pair of legs with nothing else to balance it, and its stride is awkward and slow to say the least. It is nocturnal, yet white, making it stand out with any level of light. The only way it could feed would be to face palm onto whatever it wants to consume, and probably accept death as standing up would be a Herculean feat with death anatomy. It has nothing to manipulate items with beyond its tiny feet. It cannot be an alien as it does not possess the capability to build or use any vehicles, let alone a spaceship. It would need the equivalent of magic to operate at the level required for a spacefaring civilization. When the possible explanations are exhausted with magical being, Edrich monstrosity, or genetic experiment of a madman, I think it is best we grab the whole file and just hit it with a huge red hoax stamp. It always amazes me how the so-called paranormal investigators never actually bother to spend time thinking if their creatures even make sense at the most basic level. But I digress. The myth of the Fresno Nightcrawler didn't end with fake footage and supposed witnesses. It evolved. 
Since it was brought to popularity in the age of the internet, its unique appearance has inspired many to perpetuate the legend their own way. Beyond the grainy recordings of surveillance cameras, numerous meme videos have cropped up since, and there is a whole industry of nightcrawler themed art, plushies, clothing and all sorts of other merchandise. By the nature of its inception, this monster has quite a goofy appearance, which no doubt helped it garner this level of attention. I can't blame anyone taking interest either. While the actual story is not that interesting, the little fella is very unique. Speaking of enthusiasts and art pieces, there are a few possibly unrelated wood carvings linked with the parading chinos. There is not much information on what or where these things exactly are. I was also unable to find who took the pictures or made the connection. But alas, these are allegedly Native American statues depicting earth spirits that are the wardens of the area. They bring peace and happiness to humanity. Now, some sources vehemently claim that one unnamed person of an unidentified tribe vouched for this information. No, let me use their words. They insisted this was the case. Not exactly convincing now, is it? The carvings are clearly relatively recent, so if their worship was still a thing, you'd expect there would be people coming forward to alleviate any lingering doubt. Even still, you'd think their legends would exist in some form beyond the vague line in an online article. And yet, there are no folklore creatures matching this description. Few would come close, even on a global scale. All we can go on are those vague lines lacking any source written in a way to suggest alien visitors. Listen to this. The night crawlers are beings that have pretty much always lived on Earth, even before human beings got there. According to these myths, the night crawlers have long legs that allow them to move through difficult or boggy landscapes because they are swamp world beings. It is quite clear that the audience for these speculations are people who just want to nod along and believe. This apparent desire to prove the existence of Martian corduroys to themselves as much as anyone else, this strange quirk in human programming, is probably the reason another creature is often mentioned in tandem with the Fresno Nightcrawler, despite the obvious differences. The thing is called the Carmel Area Creature, and it is roughly contemporary with our friendly neighborhood Jodpers. There was only a single reported spotting on December 12, 2014. One Robert with no surname attached, well, there's one more odd similarity for you. Anyway, this 60 years old marine, whose veteran status and age were apparently more important information than his name, was driving near Carmel, Ohio with his wife when spotting the creature. It was described as grey, tall, slim, with a muscular pair of legs and backwards bending knees. The similarity with the Nightcrawler is the apparent lack of arms. We even have a sketch. Unfortunately, I had trouble finding a link to the original Highland County Press article that actually worked, but seeing that all secondary sources used the same quote, they are likely accurate. The story was recounted by the unnamed wife of the Marine. They recently bought a plot in the Fort Hill area and after a month of living there, noticed something peculiar. A perfect circle appeared on their lawn, where the grass remained fresh green regardless of the weather. Beside the fact that there are numerous possible explanations for this, none of which include extraterrestrials or the supernatural, it has no bearing on the actual incident. It could very well be the aftermath of a favoring a natural growth pattern for fungi, but people like to make connections where there are none, so here we are. Either way, some distance after the Carmel church, after going up a small incline, they saw the thing run across the road. From the wording of the second quote, I assume the wife did not actually see the creature, but had her husband draw it when they got home, which he did, still in shock from the encounter. So we have a single, 60 years old witness, briefly seeing something in the dark, which hasn't been seen before or since. Naturally, move forward its ugly head after this sighting again, doing everything in their power to push their idea, rather than find out the truth. The one legitimate theory I've read about the Carmel area creature is a deer on its hind legs, but I'm not sure they sprint like that. Maybe the animal was reaching for something, got spooked, and started running before its front legs hit the asphalt. Could have been a bird too, like a great blue heron. Thing is, None of the explanations are obvious solutions and require a bit of stretching. On the other hand, the incident is not exactly irrefutable proof of anything either. 
Do I doubt that Robert exists or that he saw something that night? No, that bit is more likely to be true than not. Do I doubt that he saw an alien, a supernatural being or an unidentified animal with only legs and no facial features? A hundred percent and for reasons I've already discussed with the Nightcrawler. Evolution does not work like that. Speaking of evolution not working like that, I have laid out all the relevant information I found about the two entities, so it is time we move on to the specivo part of the video. Oh boy. Well, I did talk about what animals could have been misidentified as the Nightcrawler, but the resemblance is generally incidental and requires darkness to be truly convincing. I have also talked about why a biped walking upright with no other limbs, tail or any other balancing implement would not work very well. Easy prey, terrible hunter or even forager. Plus, they don't really seem to have mouth or eyes, even if the artists generally give them a pair of peepers. There are some outlandish ideas about the creature, like a land squid or a mushroom, but that is not the route I'm going to take. If you already have a much more plausible land squid in our arsenal, and mushrooms don't have muscles to move it, regardless of what the Last of Us series says. By the way, Good show, but they kneecap the plausibility of the infected even more than the games. But let's not get into that tangent, we are here for something else. So I could either go for something extremely hard to justify that closely matches the urban legend, but is a hair's breadth away from being impossible, or I could adapt the myth rather loosely. Brace for impact, as we are going to have to take US tier liberties with this one. Birds are the only animals that could be a stand-in for something with nothing but legs. Folded wings might be apparent when you know what you are looking at, but from a distance in the dark, they may as well be part of the torso. Fading birds specifically have rather long legs, and while it's not exactly relevant for the nightcrawler, their actual knees are up here, and their ankles make the illusion of inverted knees. The only trouble is that these are the only parts we need, and these animals have all these pesky additional bits that make them function. What could we even do to make them at least vaguely resemble this? There's nothing we can really do about the eyes. Even if we make a bird fully nocturnal, they kind of need those and echolocation would be quite a stretch. Not only in terms of mechanics, but also logistics. Large wading birds don't really benefit from the switch and their flight is not even close to being as agile as that of bats. They might get to perceive their prey visiting past or a boar rapidly approaching, but they don't have the maneuverability to adequately respond. But and this is a very big but, there is something else that can make them look a bit closer to the original while still providing an advantage. Breeding plumage. Yes, we are using the Specivo cheat code to explain an impractical or improbable feature, and this is only the beginning. Anyway, birds like egrets and herons have a very streamlined head atop their long neck. The reason for this is simple, they use their beaks as spears swiftly striking at frogs, fish or other small animals. It is designed to slide through the air and break the water surface with the least resistance. A nightcrawler's ball-like head would not really be useful for this, but what if it is only temporary? What if the expensive plumage is there to attract mates, to show the excellent genetics of a bird that does not care about such a disadvantageous feature, during mating season only, of course. We see this with birds of a similar lifestyle. For example, the horn grebe and the eared grebe don rather impressive coats themselves. They are divers, and therefore the unwieldy feathers do negatively impact their swimming, but it is all worth it for them. Once the season of fluff has passed, they revert back to their markedly less elegant form, which is far more practical for hunting beneath the waves. I'd imagine a similar approach for a realistic Fresno Nightcrawler. However, we are not going to use grebes, as they do not mate in California. Great egrets do, on the other hand. Our species will be modeled after these beautiful animals, as they fit the class, the color, the habitat, and a few other tidbits needed to make the thing convincing. In fact, the animal would be in the same family, and likely even in the same genus. Another option would be snowy egrets and the egret the genus. Yes, these things will be closely related once I'm done. I did say liberties were taken. So another thing to know about great egrets is that they also have breeding plumage. 
It is not bad, but the Fresno Nightcrawlers have gone a few steps further. While the two animals might seem very similar throughout most of the year, come the right time, our monster in the making grows a roundish facial disc. Only the males, mind you, but that is enough for us. But about the legs and the odd walking though, well, there is a good reason wading birds do not have feathers hanging down their legs. It's mostly them wading through water, plus extra insulation would not be necessary and just hinder their flight if anything. The Fresno Nightcrawlers don't have anything on their legs either. It is all a grand illusion, you see. Males score their significant others in a rather peculiar way. They puff up their feathers, hold their beak so close to their chest it disappears among them, and they envelop their legs using their wings. With the help of the extra fancy feathers they grew at the back, they form the illusion of two white limbs with no feet. To garner more attention, they step around while trying to maintain their posture. While it might seem like a silly walk to us, it is quite the show for the females. Yes. That is kind of it. I doubt this is what you were expecting, but that is the only way I could think of that makes the stumbling chaps into a functional animal. An aggregate that behaves oddly. However, there is still one big issue with the whole thing. It was quite a while ago since I talked about it, but we did have a date for the original footage. November. Aggrets generally breed from April to September the latest. While the temperature in some parts of California is quite pleasant all year round, that is not a problem with mating as late as November. It is more so the rhythm of nature and the abundance of available food to feed the chicks with. Winter might not make life more difficult directly there, but migrating birds do increase competition during those months, and it is not exactly the best idea to time rearing the chicks for December or January. Therefore, a season that is still ongoing in November would be detrimental. While mating is known to take place for great aggress from October to December, that happens on the southern hemisphere. Yeah, not looking good for us. The only saving grace is that it was relatively early November. It is a possibility that this was an anomaly. Perhaps a male still fueled by the desire to mate, potentially suffering from a hormonal disorder, was still chasing ladies in Jose's front yard. Maybe it was a young individual who matured a bit too late for the season. Not an impossibility as a one-off, as a rare occurrence. And that is all we need for this beautiful scene. So there you have it. A realistic Fresno Nightcrawler is a horny bird that had some trouble shedding his mating gown. An avian with a silly dance. As I've said, this is an animal based purely on the first footage as it would not fit the others. I hope you like the new addition to this piece theory and that you found the dissection of this monster interesting. Next up is the letter G, for which the poll will be up on Discord server in the coming days. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the show. Links for everything in the description. That's it for this episode. See you in the next one. Bye.